The first thing I'd like to do is present the Mercalli filter. Mercalli is a filter used to stabilize video recordings. And here in the timeline, I've placed some material to demonstrate this. I'll play it for you. And I'd like to point out that the video preview we're seeing here is somewhat limited in its quality due to the screen capture process. And so here in this lesson, you won't see it in full quality. However, for our situation here, it will still demonstrate what I want it to do. The video that I've inserted here is pretty shaky. I'll play it and hopefully you can see this in the preview. And so it's an aerial recording and so it's somewhat instable. It was also filmed with a handheld camera and so I need to somehow stabilize the images. And to do this, I'll use the Mercalli filter. As we know from previous lessons, I can simply use drag and drop to place it on a clip, and I'll do it here. And when I've done that, in the preview window, we get a message which says that the video needs to be analyzed so that the filter can do its work. And to perform this analysis, I go into the filter settings. So here, in the info palette, I'll select Mercalli. Then I'll go into the settings, and this relatively simple dialogue opens. One thing I'll point out is that you can open this up for further settings, but for our situation here, I'll use this simple dialogue. In most cases, we can simply use the universal camera mode to activate this virtual stabby cam. And all I need to do is click on the apply button. Once I've done this, the video is analyzed. Of course, the length of time it takes to do the analysis depends on the length and size of the video and on the performance of the PC. In my case, that goes fairly quickly. And when the analysis is finished, I don't need to close this window just for now, as I may need to change some settings. I'll move it to the side. And now we can look at the finished results. And yes, we can see that the video has been stabilized extremely well. I don't really need to do any adjustments to the settings, but I'll still show you something that you may need to do. And that would be to activate this rolling shutter compensation field. Especially with newer consumer cameras, the rolling shutter effect occurs occasionally. And this can lead to images not being displayed correctly. It can distort, for example, vertical lines in an image. If you do have this situation, then you can simply activate the rolling shutter compensation. In my case here, it clearly won't be necessary as the video was perfectly stabilized. However, if you aren't happy with simply using the standard settings, you can try to activate the rolling shutter compensation to see if the image is stabilized better. I'll deactivate it in my case, and I'll go to the next slider. With this slider, I can adjust the smoothing, and I can adjust it from zero, so no stabilizing, up to 100%, so full stabilizing. Obviously, you can experiment a little with this to find the value that suits your needs best. Of course, if, for example, a scene has been filmed with a handheld camera, then making it too smooth will appear unnatural. So as mentioned, you simply have to adjust this on a case-by-case -case basis. In my case, 50% was fine. I could adjust it a little bit higher and then have a look at it once more. For completeness, I'd like to show you the expanded settings. I access them from here, and we can see that a new adjustments column appears. And here we have further possibilities to stabilize our clip. For example, I have roll compensation, here I have horizontal tilt compensation, and also vertical tilt compensation. And so I could use these to stabilize an image further, but of course, it depends on the scene. And once again, you can simply activate each field and experiment with the sliders until you find a setting that suits you better than the standard settings.
the Zoom compensation section, I'll discuss in a further lesson. With this, I have the possibility to smooth zooms, which can be very interesting. In the case here, we don't need it, as in principle, everything seems okay. What I do want to show now is the Compare View field. For the minute, it's set to Final Result. What this means is that my EDIUS preview shows the final result of my stabilizing. And what this means is I see the end result of the work I've done with Mercalli in my EDIUS preview. I can change this to either horizontal or vertical split screen. And so we get the original image and the stabilized image next to each other. And so I can compare the original with the stabilized version. And so here on the left hand side, we can see the original version, which is certainly less stable, and where the camera roll certainly shows up in the video. And finally, I'd like to discuss the virtual stabby cam setting. For the minute, the default setting is the universal camera setting. For most cases, this is probably the setting you require. However, there could be other situations, and therefore there are three further possibilities. The first one is the glide camera, and this relates to a camera gliding across the subject. Or we have the rock steady camera. With this, I can simulate a camera on a tripod or a stand. With this one, Macaulay will attempt to stabilize the image as much as possible. And then there is a third setting, the alternative camera. And one could try this out if none of the other settings appear to work. This works in a different way when trying to stabilize the images. And so can work on material which doesn't seem to be stabilized properly by the other settings. So here, the best thing is simply to try them all out. One thing to note is that if I change camera mode, then the clip has to be newly rendered. The message appears that we had previously. So when I change camera mode, I have to use the apply button and then Macaulay will analyze the clip using the new mode. 